The mind's a complicated thing, and sometimes its processes confuse me. I was listening to Boris saying get on your bike the other day, and it took me back to when I got my first bike. And I remembered friends of mine assuring me that there was a life-size poster of the actress Rackel Welsh down at the local cinema. Now, I say actress, and I use that term quite loosely, because she was more renowned for having all the sticky out bits in the right place. So off I went on my bike, and sure enough, there she was, in all her glory, dressed in only fur skin bikini, and clutching a flint-edged spear. And this got me to thinking. I remembered Otzi. Now Otzi was not an urban graffiti artist like Banksy. He was a Stone Age man who died and been preserved for 3,300 years in ice. And on his possessions they found some iron pyrite, some flint and some amadou which they believe was his fire starting kit. And I thought, I'd like to have a go at that. Can't be that hard, can it? Well, the first thing I'm going to need is some suitable clothing. I couldn't find a fur bikini anywhere in my wardrobe. The most ancient clothing I could find was this. Triple denim. Probably only going to be appreciated by any of you status quo fans out there. Now another thing Stone Age Clarky hasn't got is flint and iron pyrite because he lives in the area of the country where there isn't any. You need to be going down the Yorkshire walls and working your way down the east coast and along the south coast and you'll probably find some. Iron pyrite, that's not everywhere either. Kent's a place where you could find some of that. Now a Stone Age man like Otzi was probably around at a time when they were starting to settle and you would still have your hunter-gatherers. So one can assume that there would have been trade between tribes and they would have traded things that they had for iron pyrite and for flint to make tools. Well, I'm no different. I've been out there and traded, but I've used the modern day method. I've used the internet and the postal service. And they have kindly provided me with some flint and some iron pyrite. Now the next question is what the hell to do with it? Well if we've got to start a fire there's one more thing we need. The amadou. So let's go see if we can find some. Now our amadou is contained in certain types of fungus and there's lots of different funguses and one of the common places you'll find them growing is on trees, especially dead silver birch trees. Now this particular fungus isn't what we're looking for. Now because there's a lot of different funguses and they've all got fancy Latin names some sensible person decided to give them names that a Yorkshireman could pronounce and understand. So the one we're looking for is horse's hoof fungus. And that's because it looks like a horse's hoof. So we'll take a wander over here and see if we can find anything that matches the description. I've just spotted what I think we're looking for. Let's take a look. There we are, horse's hoof. But uh, I'm going to leave this one and just have a look around, see if I can find something slightly smaller. It's 
the sort of stuff I'm talking about. Horses hoof fungus. In this case, probably ponies hoof fungus. Shetland pony at that. But this is ideal because the younger it is, the easier it is to get this outer crust off to get to the amadou. Now, with this been laid down, it makes it quite easy to take it off. Just one kick should do it. There we go. Take that back, see if we can find some more on the way. Let's see if we can get ourselves an ember glowing. Well, we've got our amadou. Put that there. Now all we've got to do is get a piece of flint suitable to strike against this. And for that we need our flint napping kit. Now unfortunately, the only napping that I'm familiar with is the sort you do when you've overindulged at the pub on a Sunday lunchtime. But I've got the equipment here. Nice little stone, which we'll use to start with. And a couple of tools to do a fine finish with, which are antler horns. Now before you all think, Clark has been out wrestling a deer to the ground to get them. Not the case. You can find these when they shed them if you know where to look. Of course I didn't find them. I did the trading on the internet again. So, here we have it. All we've got to do is chip off a thin sliver off here. Now apparently it took 30,000 years for man to learn how to do this. I've had a couple of lessons on the internet, so let's give it a go. A couple of taps, nice little sliver off there. Ah. Uh, that wasn't what I had in mind. I can only assume that the technique maybe wasn't there. Right, okay. I'll tell you what, we'll go away and I'll have a play around with this and I'll see if I can get something the right size out of this. Well, it's not exactly what we want but it'll do the job. So in theory, all I have to do is strike this with this and it's going to give me loads of sparks and we'll have a fire going in no time. Yeah, this may take some time. Well, I've been striking onto that iron pyrite for at least 40 minutes now and I've taken it into the shadows and I think there is some sparks coming off it but it's very difficult to tell in this light. So now that I'm reasonably happy there is some sparks coming off it I'm just going to prepare some amadou. Now when I say amadou what I've done so you can see it is, I've split this in half and the amadou is this top layer of material which sits above the spores. I'll bring it up a bit closer so you can have a closer look at it. And that's what we're looking at using as tinder to start our fire with, that section in there. The problem is that it's got this hard shell on it and I'm now going to attempt to take some off without chopping my fingers off which as you know is the reason I carry a first aid kit with me. So we're not going completely stone age and if I was to do it with a stone age tool it would take me too long so I'm going to use this. Now 
I've timed myself doing this before and to get the top off this would probably take about half an hour. And you get bored. So we'll come back in a minute. Now the only problem is that by the time I get this fire going, the herd of buffalo that I'm chasing will have buggered off and I need to get after them. So I need to be able to carry my fire with me. So I'm going to get a little container to help me do that. And I'm going to make that out of bark and nettles. So come on, we'll go get some nettles and we'll see where we go from there. These nettles are getting past their best at this time of year and they're not going to be very good for the job but you have to use the resources available to you. Now of course under normal circumstances I'd have my knife and I'd be wearing gloves but I haven't got knife and gloves because I'm a stone age man. So I'll use this bit of flint and so you can cut through there which is easily. Now we need to get the leaves off. Well again, Stone Age man would probably have done this. Missed a couple, but got most of them. Now you're thinking Clarky got stung then, didn't you? No. Well hard. So I've got my nettles and if you watch the experts do this on YouTube or on those survival programs, they make it look easy. And that's because they've got the perfect nettle. I don't have any perfect nettles, so we're going to just use what we can find. The general idea to make some twine out of these is to break them in two, like that. And then what we want is this outer layer and we could hopefully be able to peel this off in one piece he says now with a decent nettle we'd have a nice thick piece to use but these aren't decent nettles so what I'm going to do is spend a few minutes doing this and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at what we're going to do with it. And what I've got here is three strands and I'm plaiting them together and once this is done this will be very strong. Well, it's taken me about 10 minutes to do that much and when I run out of bits of lettuce, lettuce. When I run out of nettles I can just add in some more strands and just keep going and keep going and keep going. But we don't have time for that do we? So here's one I prepared earlier. So this was the bark and I made this probably two or three weeks ago and as you can see the twine it's still intact, it's quite strong and we can maybe just join this in as well uh -huh. like that. Put that one there, make a little handle I'll never get a job on Blue Peter There we go. We've got something to carry our hot coal in, which hopefully will be with this. There we go. Let's have a look at that.
So now we come to the big grand finale. Is it going to work? Of course it's not going to work. Even the experts on the TV have probably been doing this 30 years and they can't get it right every time. Your Stone Age man it took him thousands of years to develop these skills. And what's Clarkie had? A couple of YouTube videos and read a book. I know for a fact that I can keep striking this piece of rock all day and I'll get sparks but the chances of me lighting this bit of amadou are very slim. Normally I'd need a bigger spread of something to take the spark because the sparks it's very difficult to direct them. The amadou as well most people would advise you to boil this in a mixture of water and birch bark ash for an hour, let it settle and then do it again for another hour and it makes it very soft and it keeps it like chamois leather and makes it easier to start but I haven't got time for that because I'm chasing my herd of buffalo and the longer I'm sitting here the further my dinner's getting away so what I'm going to do is cheat but we are going to use sparks I'll just use this little bit of flint just to rough up the surface in the hope that it will make it easier to light. Sit it on there and oh, somewhere, somewhere I've got my flint and steel which is same principle but a little bit more modern. And what we need to do is we want to get this glowing and then get this glowing. And eventually if we wanted to travel a long way we could light this piece. Now I can confirm and I may show you later that a piece that size will burn for about four to five hours and that gives us plenty of chance to catch up with them buffalo. That was in real time. We've got fire. We did have fire. Now we have fire again. Just in case you don't believe me, I'm going to bring it over there for you to have a look at. There we go. Now we just need that to get going. And hopefully we can get this going. Turns out it won't work turning the camera off. Literally less than one minute. I got enough of a glow on there to set fire to this one. I'm going to leave these burning, pack all my stuff away and we'll see if we can carry this back to the car. Well, there we go. Stone Age man going after his buffalo. Not exactly Louis Vuitton but does the job.
Well, here we are. I haven't found my buffalo, but I have found my car. And the fire's still going. It's been lit about an hour and a half now. And uh, if I bring it over a bit closer, you can see that if I wanted to start a fire now, I just need to get myself a little bit of tindal and There you have it. Stone Age fire lighting. Now the problem is that by the time I've got this fire going, the bird take two. So I've got to make myself a little container out of bark and some nettles. So I'm just going to off get some ingredients and we'll uh, take three, take four, whatever. So I'm going to make myself a little container with some bark and some nettles. So I just go get the nettles. And we'll see what we go do from there. Cook, cook, cook. Follow. Well, I'm if you want to know what I'm doing now, I'm walking around looking for my hat. When I first set off for the Amadou, I put it down somewhere. Around here somewhere. <sighs> the damn thing down, and I can't find it now. Look, Marie! Fire! Well, don't do it in here, you silly sod. Look! Fine! Alan! What? Get it outside. It's like a joss stick. Right, very good. Out. Right. If anybody thinks I don't know what I'm doing, they will be completely wrong. Yes! Yes, 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 yes! Ah, I finally got some what I wanted. What we've ended up with is... Nearly there, the spearhead. Unfortunately, it's a bent spearhead. So, this is a spearhead for going around corners. <laughs> 